Hi, uh, Andy Pallane again here. I didn't actually expect to be making another D&D uh, Obsidian video, but there you go. Apparently the other one was quite useful. There's a few more things I wanted to show that I've, I've sort of since discovered since making that first video that uh, maybe people will find useful. A few of them are, are plugins um, too. So the first plugin is, um, so in, in Obsidian, I should just go in, you've got a bunch of core plugins and you have some community plugins and that's what I've got here. So you can see the, um, the ones I've got here. I'm going to be talking about stat blocks. I'm going to be talking about, um, where is it? Anyway, here, uh, Obsidian Leaflet, which is, is the one I'm first going to show. Um, and then there's a dice roller one as well. Uh, these are all by Jeremy Valentine, um, and you'll find him in the Obsidian Discord. You'll find him on GitHub. You'll find, uh, if you have Obsidian, when you browse the community plugins, you'll find them. Um, there's one I haven't actually put in here yet, which is not yet in the community plugins, although you can install it on, um, you know, directly from the GitHub build, which actually is uh, as an encounter tracker uh, from him. So the first one I'm going to do, though, is, um, you know, you can embed a map right, in easily. You can embed an image. If I um, do this, you'll see if I go, uh, I can't remember what I've got it called here, World Mount, uh, Wild Mount Map. Um, I live in Germany, I always think Wildmount, uh, Wildmount map, and um, let me just get rid of the second. Um, and you know, you're going to have the embedded image. This is actually someone else's one. Uh, this is not the official one. Um, and that's that's nice, right? So when I'm, I'm switching between preview and, and edit mode, um, while I'm doing it with the keyboard shortcut. So if I paste that back in, what Leaflet does is use is, uh, Leaflet JavaScript. It's the Google Maps uh, thing that breaks stuff into tiles. Um, and you can give it an ID. There's a few different things. You, you have to give it an ID, uh, so there's a unique one. I guess if it's in a page, it's not going to confuse. It's probably to send to the JavaScript. Kind of doesn't matter what that is. Just has to be uh, unique. Um, and then what you do is uh, you put the image that you've got. So I've got uh, the post amount. I've, I'm using the mid res, the res one here. So again, um, just using kind of wiki links form. Um, we will uh, wild mount. I want to say wild mount again. Map post map uh, mid res. Right. So this is uh, also the one I use if I'm uploading to Discord or something. So it's not too huge. <clears throat> There's a couple of other stuff. You don't need these, but I like to have the deep for zoom. I set it depending on what I'm doing. And the zoom delta is how many kind of steps it moves. Um, if you have it to one, it kind of is a bit too jumpy, I find. Um, so I've got it set to a half. So um, then when I render that, when I have a look at it, I've got um, I've got a map there. And because this map is like it works really well on little dungeon maps and stuff, right? Battle maps because they're they're not so huge, whereas this one is is pretty big. But I wanted to show you this one because uh, there I am, sort of zooming around uh, Wild Mount. If you had a player version and a um uh and a you know or you had a version and, and a kind of dm version or you had a, a version of a say a um a building and you've got kind of lower floor you know ground floor first floor and roof or whatever you can actually set up different layers <clears throat> so if i had different layers going on in the um in the map you can you can set it up differently and you can just like in, in google maps you can turn on and off different layers if you want I'm, I've got this here more as a kind of DM crutch than it is to show. I guess you could screen share, uh, and you could um, you could screen share, and you could show um, you know uh, this kind of. But I'm I'm sort of not intending to use this as a uh, virtual tabletop. But you could. Right? But this is more for me when I'm, you know if I was DMing, I could kind of always have the map there. So if they're kind of saying things like, oh, you know, how far is it from Hopper Duke to Blade Garden? Um, well, you know, you can um, you can have a look. Uh, and I think it's Alt on here. You can, you can measure it. That's as, as the crow flies. Um, but of course, I don't have the scale set up properly. So that's one of the things you can do is you can set units and scale. Uh, and I haven't got it set up on here. But um, on, on other maps, I have it set up so that the, the grid works. And you can set it up to feet and meters and so forth. Um, but there's a really good Exandria um, map online that you can look at. So you might want to use that anyway. But, you know, for, for dungeons, um, I didn't want to do any spoilers. So for dungeons, it's really good. Or battle maps, it's really useful. Um, and then, or, you know, of a city. And then if you've got a town, um, so here I've got Hapaduke. And I've, as you can see, when I roll over, I've got a little marker for Hapaduke. Um, and I, in my party, happen to start off in Odeslo here, or Odeslo. Uh, so if I make a marker for that, and then I edit that marker, I can go, okay, I want um, Odyslo. And here's my, well, here's the image for it, but here's the um, uh, the file I have that is the description of Odyslo. 
Um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Odeslo. And you can see when I hover over it, I get it. And if I click on it, it will go to my, my thing of uh, Odeslo. Um, so, that's, so that's that, so that's the mapping one. Now I've also got set up on here in preferences, you can see this little arrow here. Um, I've got uh, in appearance, I think it is, um, I have, no it's not, it's in editor. Uh, I have forward headings uh, set on. Um, and I found that kind of useful because it's, it's useful to be able to just fold that away and spin it up. Okay, so if we get rid of that. So I go back to the editor uh, and you can see it's folded there at the moment. So that's that one. The other thing you can do is, uh, you, I realize you can embed a, either another page or you can embed a section of another page. So uh, I've got a, um, an, an NPC and his name is uh, Fullbar. Now if I just write uh, his name's Fullbar, good barrel. Um, if I just do that, I'll get a link, right? And there I go, I'll get a link. Let's just fold up and wide mount there, the map. Oh, and you're seeing actually, because it's underneath this um, header here, um, it's folding the whole, it believes this is part of the content. So I'd have to make another header and I make uh, another, well, I'll, say I'll just call it full bar. Um, and um, just turned it into a tag by accident. There you go. If I put it, if I put a second level head, header, it's going to fold it up into here, right? So I need to sort of divide it up and say, okay, now this is a, its own level header. Um, so here you'll see I've just got um, the link with full bar. Okay kind of useful if I if I click on it then I go to him and if I if I um, command click on it it'll open it in another panel um, so I can I can kind of have that going on um, as I showed in the last video but the the sort of magic comes is if you treat it as an image so if instead I put the exclamation mark in front I'm going to get the, the page uh, of full bar uh, rendered here and I'm going to see it Im embedded inside my page. So this is kind of super handy because it means this is the master, right? So if I go to this uh, and I, I edit it and I say full bar, um, good barrel, um, the trickster um, in the heading, for example, uh, and I go back to this, you're seeing that this is updating because all it is doing is embedding that other page from wherever my NPC is in, in my documents up here in my uh, NPCs up here. So that's also quite good because, because you can obviously kind of uh, fold that up and down if you kind of quickly need to talk about that person and you don't have to keep repeating content, right? You, the, the worst thing is you've got multiple versions of the same thing and you make an edit to one and then you, know, you have to make edit to the other. So this way you've got a master um, NPC document that you look at, uh, that you work with uh, in this case, or whatever it is, you know, it could be treasure, it could be an item, and anytime you want to kind of embed it in your DM notes, you're just going to embed it like that. So that's what I'm, I'm doing here. Now you see I've got it set up with um, a little description of him. I've got an image, and I, I've probably stolen this image offline, so I apologize from whoever owns the copyright for this. Um, this is really just normally for me DMing at home. Um, I've, I've separated these out into, I've got treasure that he has and I've got his stat block here. Uh, and I've done this for a reason. So that um, when I go back to this page that I'm editing here, I might just, uh, I might just get rid of the map now. Uh, oh no, why not? I just go, let's say I've got the um, encounter with, with the, um, the charlatans. That's actually what this was. Um, and I've got some blah, 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 the PCs uh, encounter a group of, of charlatans, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I want to have, the, the leader of that is a good, full bar, good barrel, uh, and he's an arcane trickster. So all well and good. Maybe I don't want the whole lot. So uh, maybe I just want to talk, uh, have a look at full bars stat block. So what's really nice here is you can go um, full bar, good barrel. Oops, uh, full bar, good barrel. Um, but I want this bit of his, I want his uh, stat block. All right. Um, I only want his stat block. So I'm going to embed that. So now I've got, you'll see the kind of hash there for the, for the title. Um, and, um, I'll just zoom in a bit. There you go. So you see, I've got a kind of hash and the, the, the subheading. So now when I render that, um, I'm only getting a stat block. Right? And um, so I've, I've just got, uh, I can just sort of take out sections of a page and embed that section. So it's super useful. I might have the description instead or whatever. Right? Um, so that's really nice. 
Um, another thing is you see down here, um, I don't probably use this because I'm likely to use D&D Beyond or I'll be using uh, Avray um, in Discord or actually rolling real dice. Um, but if I have a look uh, in full bar here, so this is I'm back in full bars page here. There's another by Jeremy Valentine. There's another um, uh, plugin, which is the, the dice roller one. And um, it has this syntax. Uh, this is little bits of code, which are separated by the back ticks. Uh, and you, you can make quite complex things. So you could go 1D10 plus, uh, you know, I don't know, 5D 100s for some ridiculous thing. But in this case, I've got his, his rapier to hit. Um, and it's 1D, it's, you know, plus 2. So it's D20 plus 2. And then his, uh, the damage of that is a D8 plus 2. Okay, so underneath his stat block um, down here, which is just a, I've just got this as a PNG embedded because uh, I think I've clipped it out of... Um, probably D&D Beyond, or I've clipped it out of a, a homebrew on D&D Beyond. Uh, and now you've got these little dice rollers and you can click on them and it will uh, it shows you what it's doing. Um, and you can kind of click on them and re and re um, re roll. I don't know how random this is. I haven't asked Jeremy kind of how random it is, but you know, random enough maybe. Uh, anyway, kind of useful. Every time you, you load the page, you'll, you'll see it there. And then lastly, um, let's say I go back to Encounter with the Charlatans and I go actually, uh, so I've got full bar there. Um, but in fact, there's also a kobold encounter in there. Um, that's going to happen first because, you know, everyone loves kobolds. Another plugin is this one called 5e Stat Blocks. And in it, you can import a bunch of um, different file formats. So if you use CritterDB, um, Improved Initiative, or D&D App, so they're, all, they're always they're mostly sort of encounter builders online. Uh, again, please, you know, only import the content that you own um, or you have, you know, access to. So if it's homebrew. And then, um, so here's a whole bunch of stuff that's from CritterDB. It's all, again, all stuff from sources that I actually own. Um, but there's a, all the OGL ones in there. So all the standard ones in the basic rules uh, are, are, are built in. Um, so a kobold is one of those. And the way stat block works is I'm going to write a bit of code here. So stat block. So three back ticks. And then I'm going to write monster. And it is going to be a kobold. Um, and that's that. And then what you will see when I close the stat block is when I, when I render that, um, you're seeing the kobold stat block. And if I just move the window around, you'll see it um, wrap properly. He's also just recently added a thing where you can download this as a PNG if you want, as like a kind of belt and braces. So it's not an interactive stat block at the moment. It, it's just rendering the um, what you have. But you can kind of, there's a whole bunch of variables that you can have to this. So um, I think I'm right in saying HP is one of them. If I give that kobold 2000 uh, hit points instead, um, you'll see it appears there. Right. And, and as most of the um, different stats, you can customize it, right? So you can kind of override what the existing thing in the stat block is. Um, so again, kind of nice little bunch of things that are helpful if you are DMing in uh, Obsidian. I, uh, I hope that's useful for you and um, thanks very much. Bye.